Today we'll be taking a second look at the Primal Strength Adjustable Squat Rack or the Foldable Squat Rack. Um, I have already done a first review on it and that was when I first got it and I first gave it a quick go. Um, we had a quick dabble with it, uh, a little play around but it's a very brief and quick review. Uh, I'm going to go slightly more in depth today um, after we've obviously used it for a couple of months. I've had plenty of clients on it. Um, you know, ju just a quick update really on, on how it is and whether you should get it as well. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this is a little bit more in depth than the, the first review. Let's go. So the first thing I'll go over is just the uh, the actual hooks on here. They're, they're super adjustable. They're solid, rock solid. I, it's dead easy to, to just pull out um, and then just obviously just pop them back in. You just need to align that and then just slide it back over and then you can adjust it. So really you can use it for bench presses, squats, uh, rack pulls, anything really. Anything where you need to clip these on um, to any sort of height all the way up here like way over six foot um you can do easy easy enough so there's the first thing now the second thing is obviously these big arms here so there's one here and one on this side they're obviously for your rack pulls a support bar uh, for your squats and stuff so if you were going low on your squats you pop these up you can also use them for your bench press so take them a little bit higher and then just wherever so if you go into a failure and you've got uh, no spotter with you at least then you can't go as low obviously because you've got a tap onto the bar but um, if you can't get out, then that's your support bar. To adjust these, there's a little lever at the back, so it's a little bit similar to the hooks at the top, uh, but it's got a little button at the back, so you just pull that out, and then you can just twist it out the same, and then just adjust it there. So as you can see here, this is the bar that you're gonna pull out, and then you can just slide that over. They do have a little bit more security on the top here, so you just have to screw that out. And then once you've undone that all the way, you can pull that off and then that just comes out dead easy. So that's that arm there. It's quite big, um, really quite big, solid again, um, and it's easy enough to sort of manoeuvre and take off. Obviously you've got that as the added support um, or the added, added security on the back just to make sure that nothing sort of pings off or pings out. But that does make it a little bit more of a hassle, especially if you've got clients and this is a private studio. Um, if I was going to adjust the, uh, the the height of these bars, then it does take a little bit of time. So you might find yourself, you know, at the beginning, uh, find yourself sort of fiddling around with these a little bit more than you should be. But once you get used to it, you, you're all right, to be honest. Well, that's one slight negative, but it's also positive because at least it's secure and fixed on. So obviously I'm just gonna pop this back on there now. Pop it over, slide it over, pull that out, flick it in, and then just screw it back up. Done. Simple as that. So it is. It is fairly easy. It's just just at the beginning. You might might find it a bit of a faff, especially if you're in front of clients or what have you. Um, but that's it. Solid as a rock. So now uh, for the adjustable part, um, you've got a couple of pins here, um, and this is obviously your handle now. When they describe it to you, it's, it's shown as just pulling that up and it folds in. It's not quite as easy as that, and I'll just show you exactly how you do it in just a second. Um, and I'll go over these pins as well with you now. Um, but this is where it folds down uh, into that sort of compact uh, rack, if you like. So you've got these four pins here. One, two, three, and four. Once they're out, um, you're pretty much ready to, to rock and roll with uh, shortening the distance. Now before you can fold that up, uh, now you've taken those pins out, you still have to take this support bar off, obviously, because um, it's not going to fold in all the way if that's on. But it's pretty similar to how these bars come off, the support bars come off. You have to sort of unscrew it, there we go, on both sides. And again, this takes, takes a little bit. You wouldn't be doing this in front of clients, to be honest. Um, you, would, you wouldn't be doing this at all um, in front of clients. You wouldn't need to fold it down. This is really, if you were struggling with space in a really small studio, 
uh, or a home gym, um, you know, a lot of people have it in their garages, just get it out of the way, um, then it's ideal. So just pop them to the side, and then this bar just pops off like that again. So it's it's the same sort of mechanism. It plugs in and then folds over, and then you screw in either side, which is ideal. Once you've done that, you can now fold that rack um, completely over. So now we've taken the uh, top support bar off, we're pretty much ready to fold it down. Um, all we need to do now is, because those bars are quite wobbly, um, we'll, so they are like, quite unsupported, so we'll just take off your last hooks there, just pop them to the side, because you just don't, don't want that additional weight just sort of wobbling around everywhere, especially when you're trying to uh, manoeuvre it. Um, and I will say this, if you don't need to move it and fold it, then don't do it. There's it's just no point. It's not as easy as, it made out, as it's made out to be. Um, it is quite difficult. The best way to do it is uh, pull up through the middle and then slowly support both sides if you can. So ideally with two people, but not in front of a client. Uh, you don't want to be dropping it. And it's quite easy to sort of tip, topple over and, and sort of just fall. This is quite, quite dangerous really. Um, but this is how you do it. One side here. Lift it up, and then you want to pull this one side towards you. So if we go up, just make sure that you're watching, watching, watching. So that right there is pretty much as narrow as it will go. Um, obviously just due to the pegs down the bottom, um, there obviously the metal is just tap, tapping now. So that's that's pretty much their, their limit. I'll pop the pegs in, one, because it just gives it that little bit more support, and two, um, you don't lose them. Uh, that, that's the biggest, that's gonna be the biggest issue, like losing, losing the pegs if you keep pulling it in and out and up and down and all that sort of stuff. You're just gonna lose bits and bobs. The second thing is finding somewhere for that to live. Now obviously, if you're in a home garage or whatever, um, you can just pop it to the side and just stick it to the side. But just make sure it's not marking your walls or anything, especially if it's at home. Um, you don't want to be sort of falling and you don't want it to be around kids as well because if obviously someone held on to that, it's, it's a fair bit of weight. Um, so just be careful, like if you've got somewhere to, to put it or you can or you can sort of leave it along the side of the wall um, and you don't need to worry about kids knocking it or dogs and cats hitting it and, and knocking it over then absolutely no worries. Um, as for the adjustments for the uh, pegs, the, uh, the clips, you can just put them straight back on. So you just pop, pop that back on there, pop that back on there and then done. Now I don't know whether you can see these here, but these are other whole extra holes, um, just so you can get accessories, pop them through, so you can pop little bars through, and then you can have your resistance bands on them, so if you were strength training, or you know, you just wanted to do some resistant work um, with bands, as well as the bar, um, you can hook them on and use those as well, so rack pulls, squats, bench presses, you can use there. There are plenty of accessories on their website as well that you can use to go on, anything that's got sort of here. Um, you can get like dip bars, but I wouldn't really trust the stabilization of it because it is still a bit, little bit wobbly, but um, you, can, you can get loads of stuff. So any, any adjustments, you can go into the accessories. Uh, there's plenty of stuff that you can do. Now there's one last thing that I just want to go over on this squat rack, and that is the fact that the support bar gets in the way of your squat. So that's just one extra thing that just bugs me a little tiny bit. If I go to squat, I hit my head. So, I go under the bar like this. I've got a big chunk of weight on. I take it off and I whack my head. I'm well over the back. That is also the highest setting it will go. So it won't go any higher than that. The only way I can do it is by taking the weight off pulling out and squatting down to get underneath and then standing up. Once I'm in this position, I can squat fine and then I have to do the same to get in. So I have to go under and then up. That would be absolutely fine if I was doing that sort of weight. But if I try to go over 100 kilos and I have to tuck under to pull it back, just in case I whack my head, um, 
that's going to be quite dangerous. But there is one solution, and that is taking this thing off and popping it on the bottom of the rack. Now, just down the back of this squat rack, where you'd normally pull that folding section up, um, you've got three pins, um, three pin holes at the back, um, and that's exactly where these can sort of fit through. So all you've got to do is pop these through those holes and then just close that down towards and then you'll get your nuts there and then just tighten it on. So if you tighten them up um, for that sake and then for here at the back. So once you've tightened these up, now that acts as if like that is one big beam rather than this being sort of flexible and folding. Um, that's rock solid, so that's kept them solid. So that is where that stability bar is supposed to go, down the bottom during a squat, uh, especially if you're too tall for that. Um, I just don't really like the, the wobble that it still has, even with that bar on. Um, there's still that instability, uh, especially for new squatters. For me, uh, it's, not too, it's not bad at all. Um, it's not exactly having a rig, so it is gonna be slightly unstable, but um, for new squatters that are gonna rack it over, Having that stability bar down there helps a little bit, but you still get that, that wobble. It's to be expected. Um, you know, it's not, it's not like it's fixed into the wall or ceiling or anything, so it's not like a full rig. Um, but just a, just a word of caution, really. Um, if you were cut, like debating whether to get a folding squat rack or a rig, um, and you were gonna be dealing with people that were new to squatting and were quite uh, nervy about going in, then get a rig. But if you are struggling with that space um, and you're not dealing with people that are new to squatting or um, you know you can work your way around that sort of stability level with, with nervy clients, then definitely go for it. I'll just show you what I mean by this sort of wobble, uh, even with a bar on. Now, if I was just me jumping on or, or probably most of you guys jumping on, you're probably quite confident with a squat but when you've got a client that comes up to it and holds on and then gets that wobble, because we don't all just hold on to it straight, they'll go, oh, I don't, I don't know, oh, I don't know, I don't like it. And then they'll go under, and if they wobble a bit like this, I know I'm over exaggerating with that wobble a little bit, but you'll get a lot of, you'll be surprised how many clients actually do that and then they don't want to do the squat. You end up going with a kettlebell and doing a kettlebell squat. Even if you have to go with a kettlebell squat or a goblet squat with a kettlebell, uh, just for a little bit with those clients until they do get a bit more confident in their squat, then you can sort of work them into jumping on this, then uh, happy days. There are still ways around it. Um, just to get their confidence. It's just that little bit. I've not, just from my personal experience with noticing with clients, um, if they're new to squatting and they jump on it, they get a little bit of a wobble, puts them off. So it's just that little bit of extra work that you might need to do with a client. Um, but that being said, it's quality, uh, quality grade, it's thick, solid, it's commercial. Um, you know, it's not a cheap home sort of cheap one from from argos or anything it's it's a proper quality it's the sort of quality that you'd expect to see in a commercial gym all that being said i really like this squat rack um i can use my flat benches on it my incline bench my decline bench my deadlifts i can have my um you know rack pulls on it um squats i i can do the lot with this and it is half the price um of of any other thing there really there are a couple of little flaws but it's the same with everything if it was a big rig i would say that the big rig was too big if it was a big cage the cage would be too big it'd take up way too much room and i wouldn't be able to move it about and adjust it as well as i can with that so if i do need to move it about i can move it about as far as customer service goes thumbs up five star absolutely awesome delivery it was super fast um, the, the team were really quick on, on getting it out and if the, the product wasn't in stock they got whatever else I'd ordered out first and always kept in contact with me so to be fair I was really happy especially during Covid and they were limited on what they could do, where they could drive, you know what stock they could get in so they were limited on all these things and they still managed to deliver um, with, with e like e excellent service honestly so there's that answered as well. Um, I do recommend, absolutely, especially if you're in a home gym uh, or a small studio, um, 
but I probably wouldn't recommend having it if you're in a bigger gym, a bigger studio where you're already gonna have a rig or some form of um, platform or cage, uh, then you don't really need it, obviously. Uh, but if you are looking for that home studio, then definitely, definitely, uh, definitely grab hold of one. Um, I'll pop a link down in the description. It's not an affiliate link, I'm not paid by them at all. Um, but I'll pop you a link just so you can just go straight to it and get one if you want. Um, and then just to the Primal Strength website on its own anyway. Um, this is the Apus 7 pin bar uh, that I'm using as well. So it's the Olympic 20 kilo bar. Um, and then the bumper plates are just the cheaper bumper plates. Uh, a five kilo, 10 kilo and a 20 kilo. Uh, I've got two of each on those. And again, they were super cheap. Um, and then yeah, all the, all the rest of my kit, I'll go over the rest of my kit at another time. But that's the end of this video. If you liked it, pop me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and then whack that notification bell, just so that you can stay tuned for all the other um, equipment reviews that have got studio updates, COVID updates, home workouts, gym workouts, studio workouts, uh, whatever you're interested in, hopefully I can uh, supply that. Uh, in the future with these videos um, and that is it that's me done see you on the next one bye bye